What kind of disaster has hit this garage? I don't know how somebody works in here. Whose workshop is this? I have never seen so much junk everywhere. All right, welcome back party people. It is a beautiful day today and uh, I've got to do something a little bit different today. I'll start laying out the electrical and figuring out how much space I have in the galley there and uh, start probably building like a battery box and a box to hold all the components. So I've got all of the electrical stuff, including my battery sitting in the boxes here and I'm gonna pull that out and start staging it on some plywood to see how, big, how much room it will take up and how big the box needs to be. And then I'm gonna match my components with this diagram that I have just kind of hand drawn on this manila envelope. And I'm gonna see other than the 12 volt battery connection to the van, how many switched 12 volt signals I actually need for some of this componentry. And I don't think I have enough bus bars. So if I need more than one switched 12 volt component, I'm probably gonna have to order another bus bar. But uh, uh, the good news is, is that the battery is located under the driver's seat. I just need to figure out how to get the cables back to the galley. So let's start laying some of this stuff out. All right, we've got a lot of shading, but uh, anyhow, so the main components are solar charge controller, battery monitor, the uh, control panel, which I can actually read the voltage and how my batteries are charging. And I have a lithium battery monitor. So this is basically going to go between the, uh, the chassis battery and the house batteries. And uh, basically what it does is it charges the house batteries from the alternator at an interval. So it will um, charge in and then for a certain amount of seconds it will cut off and I forgot how many uh, that is but I'll have to read on it but uh, it basically keeps your alternator from fr alternator from frying and um, it also has some smarts in there to understand when your uh, when your lithium battery you can't overcharge lithium battery so um, it will disconnect and then the battery guard is for the 12 volt side of the house and so if you drain your this will detect if you drain your batteries down on the 12 volt side of the house and uh, kind of disconnect because what will happen is if your, uh, if your house batteries get to, uh, lower to a certain level uh, beyond what the solar charge controller will actually uh, um, understand, basically it will disconnect from the system and then you'll have to re kind of repair it. So that's a pain in the butt. So this uh, will help protect that. and. Some of these need a, uh, I can see a signal. Uh, I don't think this one, I don't think the 12 volt side does. So we have at least one thing that needs a 12 volt uh, switch connection. So we'll hopefully we'll find that under the seat. Otherwise we're gonna have to run it from somewhere, which I'm hoping not to. Uh, got some bad shading in here today, but uh, anyways, this is the, uh, the um, Multi Plus 3000. So this is gonna be my inverter and charger. I'm not uh, doing a house a shore power at this moment, so uh, basically I'm using this right now as an inverter, but the plan is in the future maybe to, so I went ahead and got the beefier model. And this is a true sine wave inverter because I want to see if I can actually run a little microwave off the system. So I probably overdid it as far as what I need for inverter power, but I did that because I probably wanted to, I knew I wanted to try to run a microwave. So. Um, we have some uh, some standard house uh, electrical circuit stuff here for the 120 volt AC side of things and I'll probably put that on the switch to if I can just switch it off uh, and uh, lots of cables connectors and all this stuff so I'm gonna start trying to lay this out and uh, figure out what size piece of plywood I need to screw it to I have three lithium-ion batteries uh, from Battleborn and uh, I've got to build a box big enough for those. We got some huge, huge 2-0 cable here. We're going to run from the battery 
All right, guys, I'm going to build a real basic battery box. It's going to be opened on both ends, but it's going to be uh, just a basic plywood box. So I've got some 1x3s I'm going to frame in the inside and uh, some plywood cut here. So uh, let's do it. All right, so the, uh, the battery box is basically going to be three of these as the frame. So it's nothing more than pocket hole screws and so make a uh, square frame so be one at the end one in the middle one at the other end and then i'll just skin it to, with plywood and that'll give me a basic battery box and uh, also uh, i might even let's see if i can get this in here i want to try to install this in there as well but i sure feel Yeah, so this will go in there as well. Come on, a minute. All right, so, so basically now I'm gonna build two more of these. Get that out of the way. I've already cut all of the pieces here. point because I'm going to be installing stuff in there and uh, I do not want to have that in my way. As a matter of fact, I may even hinge both of those and, and then screw them in. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, the idea is that we can get I think two batteries per section. Let's try it. That's number two, and should be able to get third one. folks just uh, staging the batteries the inverter a couple of the uh, battery monitor the lithium-ion battery uh, monitor fuse a few things so basically coming out of this box I want to have my outputs for my DC coming or outputs for the AC coming out of the inverter and then have a chassis ground and a pot coming out of this inverter are coming out of this box and that will run to the next box where I will have all of the other stuff installed like the charge controller a bunch of shutoffs and all that kind of stuff so I'm trying to build two boxes to keep them a little bit separate um, because I want to kind of be more modular so I can take one box off the top of the other move it and I can move it in and out these are fair, fairly light boxes once you take all the batteries and stuff out of them so so right now I'm just making some uh, you can basically call them battery cables and uh, these are two two o uh, gauge cables so they're pretty beefy and so right now what i'm doing is putting these uh, ring terminals on the end of them so that i can connect to the ground bu uh, the bus the ground bus bar and the hot bus bar and so i'll show you uh, how i do one of these crimp connections uh, it's a good workout so let's get to it all right, don't mind the jump. I've got so much stuff going on here today. It's uh, 
stuff is everywhere and really need to clean up a little bit but i've got like four projects going on and i don't have the, all the parts for all of them so i'm kind of going back and forth between the bicycle tray this box the wiring and i need to uh uh, and also the, the molding in the, the vehicle. So I'm just going to take a razor and I'm going to cut the end of this. I already know about how much. So I've got these uh, terminal ends that I'm going to put on them. So I know about how much to, to uh, strip off. And this is the very easy uh, with a razor and uh, just the tip off a little bit. Be careful not to cut your fingers, folks. Just gouge it in there. Um, this is that kind of, I believe this is silicone uh, coating, so it's very easy to cut. And uh, once you cut it, you just kind of, so once you cut it, you just kind of break it open and it's twisted around. I've seen people use pliers, but usually it's so easy, you just use your hands and you, you pull it right off and you get a tip that looks like that. And do the same thing for the other end. All right, so now we have that end stripped. So I've got this, um, so I'm doing this the non-hydraulic way, so I'm just doing it in my vise here. But I have this tool, which basically allows me to insert the crimp, the ring terminal inside, and I use my vise to actually uh, put it in. So I'll show you how this works. So basically, we'll put our ring, our terminal on our end here. And I have heat, sh uh, heat shrink, but the heat shrink will actually fit over this, so I'm not worried about putting it on right now. And this thing has spring loaded, and uh, you just pop it in there. Try to get it about halfway there, put it in your vise. Tighten it just a little bit. And then make sure everything's centered up so it came off there. Push it back out. So that. And then we just torque it. And you can tell when it's crimped because Unless you're a mere superhuman, you won't be able to go much further without uh, having the power of crushing through all the cables. And you get a, a nice good crimp like that in the cable. And we'll do the other end. We got our other end in there. Just like making welding cables or battery cables. Pretty much the same for the vehicle. Ah, there's some leverage on this ice panel. So there we are. Two slices off here real quick. ourselves a nice cable all right all right I made this platform this morning for the fridge to sit in and I'm going to use these uh, corner brackets to actually mount to the inside and outside to the floor keep it from moving but this thing's pretty flimsy it's just one by three soft white pine so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually add a floor to it to so raise it up a little bit. 
uh, which I don't think will be a problem at all because I built it so the plug will go under this board and then come out around here. So what I want to do is probably add a slat at the end, a slat in the middle, and a slat here at the end. And yeah, make sure it's good and square. So let's do that. I had to run through the hardware store to actually get more uh, stock. So I might have some extra laying around, but I'm not sure how much that might be a piece. Some of this is broken. So hey, bless you. Hey, all right. I'll put you in time lapse mode. will it fit and I can safely say it does I mean this is about the most non square wood I've ever seen in my life but I made it work so I'm gonna take that back out and spray it down with some polyurethane all right that'll do it for the fridge all right that'll do it for this video I hope you enjoyed me building the battery box doing a little bit of kind of cable in there and also building a little uh, fridge container so we're starting to make more progress. We're starting to get to a point where we're getting a lot of things inside the van and we're starting to bring the electrical in. So it's really progressing. And I can't wait to make some riding content. I'm gonna be super excited. I've got a motorcycle and two bicycles. I'm gonna hit every bike park, mountain bike trail, motorcycle park there is across the country when I get this thing working. So stay tuned for that. Uh, also like, comment, and subscribe. If you haven't subscribed to your channel, please do so. It really, really helps. Give me a big thumbs up if you like the content. Click the bell for post notifications, and you know what to do. Till next time, let's get up and ride, make a bunch of mess, and up and go.